We arrive in Sanakan early in the morning from Kuala Lumpur. Our first stop is to visit the Sanakan Heritage Trail. We'll be in East Sabah for more than a week, savoring the iconic and unusual food items, and eventually looking for near extinct animals and bird watching in the jungle. The Heritage Trail connects several historical sites and relics on this former capital of Sabah, where we can learn more about the history. We started the Heritage Walk from the entrance, a colorful staircase. There's also an official Heritage Trail map to show you where are the 10 interesting sites. The first stop is Masjid Jami, the oldest mosque which is inspired by the local and regional craftsmanship. Next, we move on to William Pryor Monument. History tells us that Sana Khan was founded in 1879 by an Englishman called William Burgess Pryor. This monument was built in memory of the founder. The third on the list is Hundred Steps. It was a scorching hot afternoon in Sana Khan today. That's why we didn't spend much time at the mosque and the William Pryor Monument. It's widely believed that the local Chinese community living behind the hills use this road to bring down the farm produce to sell at the open market in the olden days. So we are physically retracing the bygone era of the early Sanagan by taking these steps. So what a relief when we reach the fourth stop of our trail. Agnes Keith House. Do you know why? Because it is indoor with air conditioned. We felt like roaming in the oven. This museum is established in memory of Agnes Newton Keith, an American who came to Sanakan with her husband, Harry Keith. <laughs> The museum is the house uh, of Agnes Keith. So, he was in the house of Agnes Keith. So, she is She is the one who coined the phrase Land Below the Wind, the title of her award winning book about her life in Borneo. And Agnes' second book, Three Came Home that was about her family ordeals as a prisoner of war during World War II and was later made into the Hollywood movie. Then we went outdoors again to the remains of the old staircase. The ruins that we see today is actually part of the building used by the pre-war Chinese consulate. The Goddess of Mercy Temple is one of the oldest Chinese temples in Sanakan, but it was closed so we didn't manage to get into it. Reverend Henry Elton was perhaps the best known person for constructing this St. Michael and All Angels Church. It's Borneo's first stone walls church and the oldest in Sabah. There's a memorial stone erected in 1988, and below are two time capsules to be opened in 2038 and 2088. The beautiful window of remembrance is a beautiful stained glass window memorial. It was installed in 2005 to commemorate the Australians and British soldiers who died in the infamous death marches. Sam Singong Temple was initially established as a religious center for the Chinese migrants. Besides being an old temple, it is also a repository of historical artifacts and plaques containing wealth of information on the early history of Sanakan.
While we were traveling on the road, we saw the Malaysia Fountain, which was commissioned to commemorate the formation of Malaysia in 1963. The last place we visited on the trail was Wisma Warisan. This building was the main administration center during the British era and act as a general post office during the time. After visiting the Heritage Trail, we strolled in Sandai Khan Central Market, looking through hundreds of stores selling fish, vegetables, fruits, local foods and snacks. Here's where you can learn what Sabah people eat and buy. It's more than a tourist attraction. Instead, it's a place for the locals to purchase almost anything they need. Back of the market is a fish section. There are different types of seafood over there. Fish, prawns, squid, etc. More stores sell non-food items on first floor. However, our tight schedule does not allow us to stay any longer. So we headed to Sabah Memorial Park. The Sandakan Memorial Park is adjoining the site of the original Sandakan Prisoners of War Camp. It commemorates the death of approximately 2,400 prisoners of war held by the Japanese in 1945. The boiler and the remaining piece of an alternator were used during the Sandakan Prisoner of War Camp. During that time, the Japanese decided to move the prisoners of war 260 kilometers west to a small settlement called Ranao. On three forced marches, approximately 500 prisoners died, and the remainder died at Ranao and Sandakan. Only six prisoners of war escaped and survived the death marches. This is a photo representation of three nations whose citizens suffered at Sanakan during the Second World War. Finally, we headed to Sepilok Jungle Resort after a full day world wind tour. Yes, tomorrow's itinerary is about visiting the Rainforest Recovery Center, the Sepilok Orang Utan Center, and the Sepilok Sun Bear Conservation Center. Then we'll head to Billet at Lower Kinabatanga River, about 2 hours from Sanakan. See you in the next video, later.